happening with life. I guess that's a, it's another option going away from views, going away from, uh, I guess, metrics to affiliation. I guess it's a magazine style of, you might not be getting out to a lot of people, but you're getting in against the right brands. Is, is that something that Portable's explored with regard to getting away from pure numbers to brand affiliation into you know, a more, I guess, glossier style of advertising? Um, yeah, I mean, that's probably more of our model that we work with uh, elements there. I think um, views, as you know, as you, the more you can segment the market, the more you know the market, the more valuable that is. And um, we have a few interests: design, music, and fashion. And uh, for us, we're certainly seeing that more uh, as as an area. We we're really focusing on creating engaging content for our partners, and then looking to work with them to sell off that inventory, whether it be through the sites that they work with, or whether it be um, whether it happens some stuff post events. So we work. Um, the number of festivals now, including St Kilda Festival, so looking at options around there. So, you know, you always face a conundrum where you've got content for the day, everyone gets focused for the day, but there's no sort of after effects for some of these things. But if you start to work to create engaging content, then you've got legacy elements there, you're providing an experience that you're, you know, you're not going to be able to find anywhere else, such as the Subi live stream is a great example of that. That's something that people are going to watch, and that's something that then can be attached to other brands that want to be brought along for part of that process. Susie, is there a stigma of advertising on YouTube? It's pretty... You know, it represents certain demographics. Do you, do you go up, up against that when you talk to media buyers or agencies? Um, interestingly, um, YouTube's uh, breakdown actually really clearly represents the Australian population breakdown. Um, I can't remember the stat off my head, but... Certainly, uh, one thing I do know is there's an eight percent of 65 pluses on YouTube, and uh, we use Nielsen Net Ratings. So, for those of you that access, you can certainly see that breakdown across the audience. Um, it, it may have been that people did think that YouTube was just dogs on skateboards. Um, we, we certainly have uh, tens of thousands of uh, premium partners. Um, in Australia, we work with uh, premium partners such as the ABC, Channel 10. Um, SBS, IPL, of course. So I think that stigma is being is being broken down at the moment, certainly. Okay. So, is it is it fair to say that you're using traditional brands to remove that stigma? No, not at all. I think uh, what we've done with YouTube is given it a platform uh, for people to develop their creativity. Um, one girl I think we were talking about earlier, um, Natalie Tran, who's got the community channel. Um, she, what we've seen is a, a blurring between professional and the word user-generated content. Um, some, of our, some of our partners, such as Natalie Tran, um, who has the community channel on YouTube, she has um, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I think it's something like 275 million people have watched her videos, or uh, sorry, 275 million views of the videos. Um, it's, it's a platform for creativity and allowing people to express that. Um, for example, with uh, YouTube Life in a Day that re recently happened. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with that, uh, it's a film that's going to be produced by Ridley Scott and premiered at Sundance next year, so that's very exciting. Uh, we asked for submissions across the globe on the 24th of July. Um, amazingly, because uh, it's one s specific day that people had to submit, there were over 1,500 submissions from Australia. So I think that's a great number and really shows how people are using uh, social video to to uh, just demonstrate their creativity. Thank you. Um, so I guess moving on to social, are you doing much in the space, Simon? From a from a social video perspective. Yeah, I mean everybody's doing social to some extent, but where are you taking it? Um, we're still wrestling it back within the actual content that's being created. So whether it be an image or whether it be a video, and then going out from there. So getting something that people are going to watch and to share. So invariably, great channels for that. You, you know, YouTube, very high on the list. Vimeo, very high on the list too. I'm not telling anything that people don't already know here. It's again, just about putting metrics to it and then defining what denotes success. Um, I, think, I think what's interesting, you know, like we, we're a partner with YouTube. Um, we probably get, oh, I don't know, medium, probably, I don't know, we're in the top 50 or 100, the, I don't know, I shouldn't know this, probably a couple of million views a year. 
Um, and we're on a rev share agreement, and that's all. That's great. But you know, there's, there's no disrespect for YouTube at all by this. It's just the nature of the market. You know, we would probably, you know, be able to, uh, you know, pay and uh, you know uh, the gas bill, you know, for the year through something like that. It's still nothing that that is sizable. Um, you know, and look, we're like we're probably a medium. You know, we're not we're not massive, but we're certainly not small either. So. Um, I think that's something too interesting to take account when you're talking about the social side. So really where it's about where the dollars are coming from. I think it's probably a lot less about revenue share, so to speak, more about working with your clients to say, you know, you should uh, get $30,000, $40,000 and we will create a social video experience and then we will get you the views and, you know, if we get an ad share with it, so be it, that's fantastic, but really it's about being able to drive people to watch this and then to action upon it through social media, take them back to a mini site or whatever else you please. We'll get to you. <laughs> now, I will ask you, probably a lead into what you want to answer now, but uh, Viacorp's just signed a big deal out of Malaysia. So you're doing a lot of traditional TV, you're providing services for the delivery of that TV, but how, how is Viacorp extending that experience into <laughs> yeah, it's still too broad. Um, but how is Viacorp extending that experience? It's probably doing social. Maybe it's maybe along the boxy lines, but yeah. Um, if, if I may just just pick up on what Simon was saying about social TV. Um, late last year, we started doing uh, synchronised uh, commenting and Twitter feeds next to the live video, and it just had a massive impact on driving attendance. It had a massive impact on the audience appreciation, very much like this is now. I, mean, I attend these events regularly and I love watching the Twitter feeds because we've all got good comments to make about what we're talking about. Many of you could be here as well. Um, and clients have really jumped on board on that because um, you know, sometimes online it's just, you know, it's just one way, but um, having the, the synchronized Twitter feeds really worked. Um, we had an amazing experience last week with the first live stream of Australian content into YouTube for the IT Minister debate. It was, the, uh, it was held at the Melbourne, sorry, the Canberra Press Club. It was broadcast live on most broadcast free-to-air. And what Sky News did, which was clever, was they gave the content to YouTube. We were the facilitator in between to push it into the YouTube channel. And we had the uh, Twitter comments and comments next to it. The numbers far exceeded what we thought. We had 16,000 views in total. It peaked at 2,000 concurrent. Um, now that's, I don't know the official numbers, but somebody told me that Sky News on a good day gets about 20,000 views. So that's pretty good going. Uh, you're probably quoting me on that now, but I don't know if it's true. So, uh, um, so that, was, that was great. But then of course we had the problem of all the comments coming in. Usually the live views you get between the hundreds and the early thousands. So from a moderator's perspective, you can have two or three moderators. We just found that so many comments were coming in that we couldn't keep track of moderating them because as you can imagine, there's a lot of people going, Conroy's a dickhead and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> uh, which might be quite true. Um, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, like Nikki's moderating the, the comments here and she can probably just about keep up. Twitter was going crazy that day as well. Too, yeah, so it was everywhere. Absolutely, <laughs> it was everywhere. So the problem was, was that on the Twitter feed, they were just coming in so quick that you actually couldn't read the, the, the comments quickly enough. So for the next one, what we should do is have specific hashtags for each sort of topic, the filter or whatever. Um, digress from your question, but I hope it was relevant. <laughs> Malaysia. All right. Um, we last two Fridays ago, we launched basically a Hulu for a, the biggest Malaysian broadcaster. It took us five months to build it. Uh, it's, the web address is www.tonton.com.my. Um, and what it does, you go on and you register and you profile yourself. You can watch all the TV shows, the films, uh, the news, whatever you like. Some content is free, which should be advertising supported. Some content is freemium, or some content is premium. And the advertising is dynamically targeted, so I would get a different ad to what you might get, because we're different gender and different interests, so the advertising is more relevant. 
and it also got a very big recommendation engine so you uh, can you know, create your own playlist so that if Simon and I have got similar interests, he can see what I'm watching and then wrapped around that there is all the, the normal social networking stuff as well so you can you know, comment about the shows. I mean, we've seen you know, Q&A is a great example, MasterChef was a great example, the World Cup went through the roof and you know, comments about it. So um, you know, we're very, very proud of that site and how it's, it's taken, it, 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 it's, it, it's internet TV, it's IPTV, so it's a lean back experience but with the social networking stuff going on as well. I guess it raises a really good point and that is, and maybe we're yet to see it, but do people want that? Do the, do the audiences, even, I don't know, maybe Malaysia, Korea, some of these areas, maybe want these kinds of things, but do the bulk of the audiences want it? Um, some do, some don't, and I also think it very strongly depends on the type of content. You know, if you're a film, if you're watching a film, you don't want it bothering with social networking, you just want to enjoy the, the, the story news, discussion programs, sport, they have their roles to play in it, you know? The point is, is that what's good about the portal is that there's, you know, if you just want to sit and watch, it's exactly, it's replicating TV, but on the internet. If you want to, those shows get involved, and, and you can do. And the, the sharing features on those kind of platforms, again, they're opt-in? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, we might grab uh, a couple of questions from the, the Twitter feed. I might, I might just start off with one of the things that you brought up being the election. We can all maybe chime in here, but did it work? Was there any value for, you know, maybe maybe come, come at it from the different people? So was there value to you? Was there value to YouTube? Was there value to the, the audience? Was there value to the parties? Who wants to go? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I hope so, because they're getting eyeballs, they're going cross-platform, they're getting some interactivity and feedback. Um, uh, you know, they're all fighting amongst each other, YouTube including, to get those eyeballs, you know, to, uh, to make it work. From a consumer perspective, you know, we were all at, we're all at work and, uh, you know, you're not allowed to watch video or, you know, you're too busy and, but, or, or you can, but you don't have a TV at work, so you can watch these things during the day. Um, I can remember when the, the Rudd resignation was on, I was at Fed Square just being to see the Tim Burton exhibition, which is brilliant by the way, if you haven't been, uh, and came out and there it was on the big screen and there was, you know, that was great seeing that, you know, again, mini example cross-platform. Cross um, so, look, when, when, when all your content through your TV is delivered through the internet, which is already happening and coming, it'll, it'll just be the default. You know? Um, in terms of works, I guess that depends on who eventually wins the election, whether it worked for them or not, and how much they got. Um, certainly I know when it comes to election time, and I was in the UK at their election, um, people want to see and want to interact with the politicians, and at YouTube we do offer that, that platform for that. So. Um, are you able to talk about Google TV at all? No? <laughs> Uh, rumor, and I can't keep up with all the rumors that are around. But, but you know that. Uh, yeah, but I don't want to. <laughs> 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 I don't like do. uh, okay, well, rather than do that, can we get you to talk about numbers for a minute? We're talking specifically about, I guess, what your value proposition is. Mm -hmm. When when people speak to you, what kind of spends, how much how much certain uh, exposure on YouTube is worth. So. 